Hey everybody, Nick here from Chipstock Investor. Just me today, brief update on a, what we see as a great way to kill two birds with one stone. Buy the dip. July was a pretty rough month, especially for a lot of tech stocks. Of course, for a lot of semiconductor stocks that we cover every week here on Chipstock Investor, as well as a way to play the possible US Federal Reserve rate cut that's possibly coming in September. Casey is busy working on some earnings coverage, including an update on Transmedics. You can find all of that over on our Discord channel or on our Kofi shop. If you are a semiconductor insider member, check that out. It's just five bucks a month. That's probably nothing for you, but it means a great deal to Casey and I. So thank you for the support and the consideration. Okay, best way to bet on the US Federal Reserve rate cut. First, let me show you what it is exactly I'm talking about here in the first place. On July 31st, the Federal Reserve issued its latest statement. They, of course, kept the Fed funds rate fixed where it is at five and a quarter to five and a half percent. However, in this prepared statement, they did mention that job gains have moderated. The unemployment rate has begun to move up a little bit, and there has been further progress towards the FOMC's 2% inflation objectives. Now, in the Fed's press conference, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that if inflation continues to come down back towards that 2% target, a reduction in the Fed funds rate is on the table at the next meeting in about a month and a half, September 17th and 18th. It appears that we are getting closer to that rate cut. Why does that matter? Well, we began covering this a few years ago when it became clear the Fed was going to be hiking interest rates. It's been all part of their fight against inflation. But the nasty side effect for investors, of course, has been especially severe, especially in 2022. That's because companies like tech businesses that are in growth mode are highly sensitive to interest rates. The future value of their profitability can change dramatically in present value terms. So that's why we have the bear market of 2022. But as the pace of those interest rate hikes tapered off in 2023, we have the new bull market led by NVIDIA and the semiconductor industry. Now, on the flip side of this, if the Fed does begin lowering interest rates, you can see I have the lower part of this article snapshot from AP highlighted here. Lower rates should reduce borrowing costs for consumers and businesses, especially small businesses. This episode is sponsored by our friends at public.com. Are you dissatisfied with your savings account? Check out public.com. Public.com has just launched its new high yield cash account, offering an industry leading 5.1% APY. There are no fees, no subscriptions, no minimums or maximums, just 5.1 interest on your cash. You can transfer or withdraw cash as often as you like, and you get up to $5 million in FDIC insurance. Grow your cash in an industry leading 5.1% APY with a high yield cash account at public. Go to public.com to learn more. So jumping over here to this tool from CME FedWatch, link to this tool in the description below, we can begin to see what the implied probability is of a Fed hike in September. It looks like about a quarter percent is a high probability. And then another quarter percent cut later this year in November, and then yet another cut highly likely at the December meeting at the end of the year. So we're looking at interest rates being back under 5% by the end of 2024, possibly, if these probabilities are accurate. And you can see the methodology for CME Group and the CME Fed Watch calculates these implied probabilities of a Fed rate cut. So lower interest rates could mean good things for small businesses. What's a best way to bet on this? You've probably heard us talking about our top two ETFs. If you've been following the Chipstock Investor Channel for a while, one of those top two ETFs that we've owned for a long time, the VGT or Vanguard Information Technology. This is a passive index of 
technology businesses that trade on U.S. stock exchanges. And in true Vanguard fashion, the expense ratio is about as close as you're going to get to nil. Just 0.1% a year is the expense ratio. Now, this fund is based off of an MSCI index, technology index that captures the whole spectrum of the IT sector. So MSCI, Morgan Stanley Capital International, actually spun off from Morgan Stanley back in 2007. This index has been around for a while, and it's put up some very healthy returns, including this year, 2024, even with the nearly 10% dip that we had in July, still looking at a better than 20% year-to-date performance, nearly 40% on a compound annual growth rate basis. This is a rock solid ETF. And if you look out over the long term, the last 10 years, over 20%. And then since inception of the ETF in 2004, nearly 13.5%. These are market beating returns from this ETF. Of course, the last 10 years and the last few years skewed by first the run up in software as a service and cloud software companies. And now more recently, and the semiconductor industry, but this is nevertheless a really solid ETF. Now, why is it a top small cap ETF? Notice here in my share screen, 320 stocks in the portfolio, PE ratio on average 39 times. This is a premium priced portfolio, heavily stilted towards software, application software. And then you can see there at the bottom systems software. And of course, semiconductors at nearly 30% of the fund's holdings. Also included in there, some semiconductor materials and equipment, some of our favorites that we like to talk about here on the Chipstock Investor Channel. Here's a look at some of the top holdings in this fund. Of course, very familiar names in the IT industry, Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA and Broadcom, the two big semiconductor giants skyrocketed into the top five of the list here. And then plenty of software, especially cloud software names here as well. Salesforce, Adobe, Oracle, which is also now a cloud infrastructure play. You can also see in these holdings a little bit further down the list, Applied Materials, LAM Research, and KLA Core, three of the Fab Five, the other Fab Five being ASML and Tokyo Electron, not included in this index, but still plenty of exposure for the semiconductor capital equipment market as well, if you want to bet on semiconductor manufacturing. Now, before we delve into the small cap portion of VGT, you'll notice some names are missing. Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, or Google, and Meta, aka Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, as well as Visa and MasterCard. That's because that MSCI index the classification of some of these companies has evolved over the years, uh, especially in the last decade. If you looked at the top sector companies a decade ago, included in that mix would have been companies like Verizon and AT&T, which have since been moved out of the tech sector and the communications. Same happened with Alphabet and Meta. Those are also now classified as communications businesses. Visa and MasterCard got moved into financials. Amazon and Tesla into consumer discretionary. So if you're looking for inclusion of those make cap names, we like VUG, Vanguard Growth. That's our other big ETF holding. You can find more information on that one here. Links to all of these sites in the description below. But let's talk about this part of the VGT portfolio. So after you get past the top 20 holdings, which make up nearly three quarters of the total portfolio. So this is definitely a mega cap and large cap skewed ETF. But there's a mistake that a lot of investors make. We generally feel like you want mega cap and large cap companies to make up the bulk of your portfolio. So VGT has that covered. If you want to make a bet on mid cap and small caps, fine. That's great. There's tons of growth potential there. Perhaps you land the next NVIDIA or the next Amazon or the next Alphabet, whatever. The problem is the probability that you nail that next big tech business 
or the next big thing is very, very small if you're only betting on a small handful of stocks. And a lot of investors we see bet large portions of their portfolio on small and mid cap stocks probably are just not going to turn into a large cap business. So you want broad exposure. This other section is where you get this very long list of mid cap and small cap businesses. And inevitably, one or two of those could skyrocket into one of the world's biggest IT businesses and one of the world's largest businesses over the course of the next decade. Your chances of landing that by owning an ETF like VGT are much, much higher than if you're just simply trying to cherry pick. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is back to the VGT page. If you scroll down to the holdings list, especially when you get down into here, the 90th through 100th largest holdings of the fund, very small portion of the portfolio, you see a lot of these mid cap software companies. We go down even smaller, lots of other even smaller businesses in the software front down to page 20. Now we're getting into some small cap businesses, more software, including companies like Informatica, which Salesforce apparently was trying to acquire, as well as this small cap semiconductor business, Semtech, which we've received some requests for as far as coverage on the channel. You get the idea here. We simply don't have time to research all of these businesses, let alone make a video on all of these businesses. But if you own VGT, you get exposure to the large businesses that are pushing the market forward right now that have formed the foundation of the new bull market. But you also get what ultimately amounts to portfolio concentration into that long tail of mid cap and small cap stocks as well. If you want to bet on a, a rebound, in CrowdStrike, you, you get that with VGT. You get exposure to CrowdStrike without the risk of completely blowing up your portfolio of CrowdStrike. doesn't rebound. If you want to try to find the next up-and-coming software giant, you get that. It's going to start out as something like a 0.1 to 0.2 percentage point portfolio composition of VGT. But again, that's still over-concentration in your portfolio. Whatever it is you're looking for here, the next big thing is going to be embedded in VGT. You get the broad exposure that you need so that statistics work in favor of your portfolio. And so you're going to get that growth from what ultimately becomes the next big thing 10 years, 20 years from now. But again, really important without the potential of blowing up your portfolio by investing in some not tried and tested small cap business putting 5% of your portfolio in something like that, statistics are no longer on your side. You now suddenly have a very, very high probability of underperforming the market or permanently losing a sizable chunk of your portfolio's capital by making a move like that. So an ETF like VGT, again, two birds, one stone type of solution here. You get all the mega cap and large cap exposure after the dip in stock prices in July. And in addition to that, you also get a bet on small cap businesses that could finally start to make a move higher when the Federal Reserve possibly cuts interest rates starting in September. So this remains our top ETF holding for investors looking to construct their portfolio and you're not really sure where to start. Take a look at this one as well as Vanguard Growth, which is basically just a large cap ETF. It's, it's the S&P 500 growth businesses. These can be a fantastic place to start as you build your portfolio out. So check those two ETFs out. VGT in particular, our top ETF holding. No plans on changing that anytime soon. It's gonna be an integral part of our chip stock investor portfolio for a long time. Thanks for watching again, everyone. We'll be back again one more time this week with another video. And again, if you're missing Casey today, you can find her over on Discord. Sign up to the Semiconductor Insider membership for just five bucks a month. That's where we can all hang out. We have lots of exclusive content like this ETF coverage that I just ran through over on the Discord server. We appreciate the support very much. Hang in there, everyone. We'll talk to you real soon.